Hey guys, welcome back to another video. This is your girl Mary and in today's episode I will talk about the top three variety shows I recommend to you if you're looking to up your Japanese skills. So, so for those who don't know what variety shows are, they are a type of comedy show very popular here in Japan and it's where usually there is one, two or even three hosts and they usually talk to a bunch of guests or they're talking amongst themselves about something funny either about uh, a topic recently or they're talking to the guests about their lives and stuff like that so you may think oh that sounds similar to the western style but there's a main difference i think the main difference is the humor style is quite different so whereas in variety shows in japan it's more likely that will be slapstick humor maybe the host is very sarcastic so sometimes even almost insulting uh to the guests but usually, of course, that's something they talked about before, so it's acceptable. Or it's more of they do skits or things like that. Whereas in the Western style of variety shows or comedy shows, it's either if it's a comedy show, there's actually somebody doing a stand up comedy, you know, talking like that. Or it's more of a talk show style like Ellen DeGeneres or um, the Jimmy Kimmel and stuff like that where they're talking to themselves, to the audience, and then they have one guest they're talking to. So the reason why I highly recommend watching Japanese variety shows to up your Japanese game is because it is like a real life situation if you're here, here in Japan. So the one negative thing about watching anime to improve your Japanese is that oftentimes the vocabulary or you know the type of um phrases they use in anime it's not real you're not gonna hear that here in japan you're not gonna hear anybody say oh Temera, nani ya no like no you won't you don't hear that but variety shows tend to have more common day or common everyday use words and as well it's actually really great to watch variety shows because you pick up what the common topics are what the hot topics are in that time in Japan so it's much easier to uh, talk to people about if you are here in Japan make friends and talk to people about that or if you live abroad to do more research and you know look at the latest news and actually understand what's going on so now I'm going to introduce the top three shows I recommend uh, that you can start off with if you are mid or high level in Japanese so the first show actually is one of my favorites and very dear to my heart. I think since I started learning Japanese, I've been watching this show for at least four or five years. And the show is called Ame Talk. So Ame Talk has been running since 2003. I'm just got to check my notes. So Ame Talk has been running since 2003. And the hosts are two guys. So the host is Toru Hotohara and Hiroyuki Miyasako and these two guys are actually really famous uh, comedians they're about in their early 50s and they've been in, they've been in the game for a long time and Ame Talk I think is one of their most famous shows because it is widely popular in Japan I think at least at least you know if you talk to anybody in Japan they all will know this show so this is a really good show to watch so the style of Ame Talk I really like because they have a variety of styles their main style is um, where they will have a group of uh, other comedians come on as like kind of like their panel or guest and then they will have a topic to talk about so some common topics would be like oh um, manga gay no jeans so that just means gay no jeans or comedians who like manga or there'll be topic topic about basketball gay no jean or there'll be like book gay no jean or they'll have um, they'll have like painting gay no jean so actually I want to show you guys a quick clip of the kind of comedy they show in this uh, painting gay no jean you can see in just in that previous clip you can tell that they all have chemistry you know they're all trying to um, make jokes one over the other they usually have something as a topic to focus on and then they point that out so I think this type of style is really good for mid-level Jap uh, people studying Japanese because one you still get a lot of captions so if you notice they always say most of their stuff and they actually write out in captions and as well they often 
time use like a board or they have VR, which it just means video recorders, where if they're talking about a story or something that happened to them, they'll show you a video recording of that. And you may think, oh, well, you know, what's the big deal about that? But that's very key, major key alert. It's so lame. And it's because by having a reference uh, to watch when while you're hearing them talking, even though you don't understand 100% of the words, you can at least see and watch and they kind of understand what the general context is. And then having the captions means that if you hear a word, but you're not quite sure what it means, you don't even need to be able to like uh, sign out yourself. Just look at the caption and then search it on the dictionary. So oftentimes I find myself pausing the show when I used to not know much. Pause the show, look up the word they're talking about, and then I'll get to understand what they're saying. So I think Anime Talk is a great show to start off even maybe, um, um, what's it called? Start off for even maybe late beginners to mid-level people in the Japanese uh, studies. I would say at least one year of Japanese studies and you could watch Anime Talk and understand a good so the second show I would actually recommend for those who want to up their Japanese game is a show called Konya Krabete Mimashita. And Konya Krabete Mimashita just means um, comparing tonight, I guess. And it is a hilarious show by three hosts. Uh, I just go look right here quickly because I don't never remember their names. So the first one is Yoshimi Tokui and he's a really famous comedian. He's known as like the Ikemen comedian. So girl, he's tall, kind of handsome uh, for you know the comedian standards. So he's quite popular for that. Terimoto Goto, he's another famous Kansai or I, I believe Osaka uh, comedian and he's short but really funny and he can play the guitar so sometimes he'll be playing his guitar to do some comedy kind of thing and then another one is Shelly she's actually a foreigner or half I believe and she became popular in Japan for like over you know, 10 years now I think and she's nice because she brings in a bit of that uh, foreigner perspective as well as the Japanese perspective and then the last one who recently joined a couple years ago was uh, Rino Sashihara and for those who like the AKB or the idol they will know her because she was in the AKB 48 so Konya Krabite Mimashita is actually a great show one because it has a, a it has these four hosts and they have such different personalities so they bring in their own personalities uh to the show and you know they talk about their opinions and that's why we like it because um um tokui who is usually the one who introduced the topics he has this funny way where he will bring in the board and on that board is pretty much you know explanation for what they're talking about i think this is also a great resource for people learning japanese because as they're talking about the variety of topics you will genuinely understand okay by watching him use the board you can understand what the topic is about so the main type of topics they talk about are usually i would say more um hot topics in that time so they will talk to maybe a famous idol group or they will talk to um, you know some at famous actresses or actors and do like oh let's check in what your daily life is like oh let's see how your house is in Hawaii or you know let's um, look at these dancers so I like this style because you get to talk to not only you know you get to see famous people's real lifestyle so they will tend to use more everyday vocabulary while still having the hot topics that's going on in the time so you are aware of what the hot topics are in japan i think konya krabete mimashita is a great show for that style and the, i think the age range is a bit younger whereas emmet talk i think it's more for people maybe late 20s and above while konya krabete mimashita could be more for like people in their early 20s to to late 20s or 30s and such as that so I think that um, range is good and definitely it's a really funny show so you should check it out. I think I should have a clip for you guys to check out uh, what type it is so here's the clip. Entry <laughs> あ、あの、そうですね。あの、俗に俗に言うアイドルみたいな。ちょっと自分でもよくわからないんですけど。まあ、私と同じジャンル。何をなりわいにしてるわけですか、あなたは。あ、えっと、いろいろです。え、and now the final third show that I highly highly recommend for those who actually are a bit more on the higher level. So this is more for the advanced 
Japanese uh, learners who have at least, I would say, two years of learning Japanese, meaning that you don't have any issue listening to basic stuff and even mid-level stuff. So you maybe can watch Ame Talk or Konya Krabit, Konya Krabit uh, and understand 50%, uh, but now you want to build a challenge. So this show is called Sama Goten. Sama Goten is actually hosted by one of the most famous Japanese comedians in Japan and he is considered one of the big three. His name is Sanma Akashia. So and most people just call him Sanma San. And he hosts a bunch of shows, but I think this one is actually really famous because it's been going on since 1997. So that's more than 20 years. 22? 22 years. I'm recording this in 2019. So 22 years. And this show, the reason why I say it's very high level is because unlike the other two shows where they rely on um, boards to explain and they have a lot of captions and they have a lot of VR, well, VR? <laughs> videos to um, show what they're talking about, Sama Goten is raw, honest talk show. It's like he's, he, uh, he's a really fast speaker too. So he would just say his jokes, say his lines, and then usually there's a guest, maybe around mm, average about 10 to 15 guests. So a lot more people who are just doing that uh, yari tori with him, which just means they're doing that back and forth. So it's a lot more raw, it's a lot more real, but it's also it also shows, I think, the real um, example of how if you were talking to a bunch of Japanese people, that's how it would be like. And that's why I, I really like this show because although uh, you don't get as much captions, you do still get some captions so you can still try to follow along, but it is way more intense and way more high level uh, conversations. But the topics are still simple-ish because he has a variety of guests. He's usually talk, talking to them about what's going on in their lives right now, um, what they're up to right now. So the topics are never too complicated. Um, it's usually still able to be easily understood, but it's a lot more raw. So I think this type of show is best for people who are more in the advanced level and want that real challenge without having the crutches of seeing like a lot of captions or a lot of um, VR. So I think I should have a clip here of the Sama Goten and check it out. <laughs> Okay guys, so those are my three recommendations for the best variety shows to watch to start getting your Japanese to that next level. If you like this video, please definitely like. Uh, and let me know in the comments what your favorite variety shows are if you do watch variety shows if not uh, what ways do you um, or what type of shows do you watch to increase your Japanese skills and as always subscribe if you're not subscribed yet and look forward to my next video where I'll talk about the top podcast I recommend to learn Japanese so it's your girl Mary from Tokyo have a lovely day bye